starting. Um, and how do I start to broadcast? I don't know. That's why I asked you to. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, well, we, I'm not host. I don't we know do, how to do We that. do have attendees. Yeah. Yeah. Do I do so anything this, to broadcast? This is just open, right? Unless you had a practice session, you, you shouldn't have to go live. No. Okay. If you see attendees but, in the room, then you're broadcasting. Yeah, we see, we see Bruce Coldham. Okay, great. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, you can see that we are, are still learning our Zoom world. This is Kathy Shane. I'm Kathy Shane, and this is the Thursday 8 a.m. meeting of the elect elementary school building committee. And per the governor's orders, um, I see we have a quorum, but I need to call out everyone's name to make sure they, they can hear us and we can hear them. So I am going to do that first and call in the order I see people on my screen. Uh, Paul Bachman. Present. Mike Morris. Present. And Margaret Wood, who's not on the committee, but I can see she's here. Uh, she's here. John McNano. Here. Steve Schreiber. Here. Jonathan Salvon. Here. Ben Harrington. Here. And Rupert Roy Clark. Here. And as others join us, we'll, um, I'll make sure they uh, can hear. Um, this morning, I think you all saw we had a ch change in the order on the agenda. And we move the web page discussion up first. Um, and I'm only seeing Brianna here, but I know we're expecting Carolyn and Deborah also. Is that correct? Um, That's right. So we'll, wait, we'll wait a few minutes for them to join us. But Brianna, you had uh, agenda conflicts, so it was important we start with you originally. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Okay, so just, um, uh, you know, so I'm waiting a few minutes for the others to join us. The other items on the agenda, Mike is going to give us an update on uh, the decision on sixth grade. And for anyone who read the Gazette this morning, we, will, we had a preview of, of that decision. And then we're continuing the discussion of designer proposal submissions. And in this case, really zeroing in on comparative comments either positive or gaps, so that we can complete the grid. And I ask people to think of possible interview questions. And if we don't get through a lot of that today, I think people can send me any other comments in writing, just send them directly to me and we will consolidate them and continue to add to that grid. Um, I still, um, Margaret, do you know whether Ca uh, Caroline is the lead off on this web presentation, correct? Yes, and I did just email her um, to see if she's joining us um, because we do need her to talk about the web. I can give a little preview of the conversation we've had so far, if that maybe, would be. Maybe just if everyone's okay, why don't we start with the sixth grade? Um, yeah. That's a good idea. And, and then and then instead of just doing a waiting. So Mike, you're on. And, and Ben, feel free to jump in as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, on Tuesday night, the and I haven't seen the Gazette article, so uh, I can't comment on that one, but uh, I was at the other meeting. So on Tuesday night, the Amherst School Committee voted unanimously to transition sixth grade Amherst students to the middle school in the fall of 2023. Uh, and so I'm not going to try to summarize all the deliberation because um, that's all public record and folks can, can see that. But certainly the MSBA project was part, but not all of the discussion, um, you know, and the opportunity to kind of resolve the infrastructure issues at both Fort River and Wildwood was, was a reason I gave. And I know some school committee members also agree with that. I think there was other pedagogical and educational reasons that were considered uh, and space reasons by the committee. It will be taken up by the regional school committee next Tuesday night with a potential vote. Uh, if not, then two weeks after, because the regional school committee has to accept uh, students, not just Amherst students, but potentially students from other towns as well into the middle school uh, for that to happen. So it is a two vote uh, kind of thing. And the first vote went unanimously on Tuesday night. And I think that the next vote uh, hopefully will take place this month because the region has two meetings 
And so, you know, I think some of that does set the stage for when an architect's on board, it sets a real direction for me, you know, my role of creating an education plan and also for the project, given the binary choice the MSBA offered us of either doing, you know, a K to six, 320 or a K to five, 520, 575 student school. Um, you know, the school committee has that role around great configuration. And um, I think they're gonna make this, this committee's life a little easier. So thank you, Mr. Harrington and your colleagues. Uh, you know, separate from the decision, just having a decision before kind of design starts, I think will be a huge benefit for the work. And actually, I hope it will expedite some of the work because I think we're all, I'll say for myself, I'm pretty, pretty excited to get students out of the current structures and into kind of a state of the art building um, that's both greener uh, and a better learning environment. So Ben, did I, what, did I capture most of it? Anything I'm missing? No, that, yeah, that was dead on. The only, the only things that I would add are like, uh, things that I can't say before a pending vote. So yeah, we're good to go. <laughs> so I have I have one question, Mike, and, and I said, Mike uh, and Margaret, those who know the MSBA process, since they gave us two possible models, if we've gone ahead and made that decision, can, do we alert them that we have? Um, sort of that's part of a question. And then when we're at the designer selection and doing the shortlist, um, can we focus discussions on the fact that it's likely to be a consolidated school and then we're choosing between two sites? So it's that's my double related, given that that decision is likely to be made. Mike? Right. Oh, no, go so, ahead. I'm sorry, Margaret. I, so I think um, what we should do is after the second vote has been taken, we should notify them. Mike is nodding. Um, and I do think um, at that point when we notify them, I'll ask that question. I would expect them to agree with that approach, um, Kathy, but um, it's always a good idea to ask them, um, you know, to, to confirm their concurrence. Yeah, I'd agree. And I think just regular com communication with MSBA is just really, uh, they welcome that. Uh, they've never told me I'm communicating too much. I'll put it that way. Um, <laughs> And so I fully agree with Margaret. I think waiting for the second vote um, likely makes sense, uh, especially as it's scheduled before the designer selection panel on November 2nd. Um, I, th I think there's plenty of time between those potential votes of the regional school committee and that meeting to inform them of that so that they're in the loop. Great, and I, I see that Phoebe has joined us and Allison has joined us. So I just wanna make sure that you can hear and be heard and I know, Allison, you had emailed me that you're going to have to leave early. So, um, Phoebe, are, are you okay on your end? I'm good. Thank you. Okay, great. And Allison is there on the screen. And I think Debbie has joined us. Is that correct? Although she says her label says uh, Mike Morris. Oh, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. I was going to see if Debbie got in because she just messaged me. She was having trouble getting in. I did. <clears throat> I used the link and I think I probably used the link from your invitation, Mike. So that's probably why it shows me as you. She's an, so, she's an upgrade, so everyone should be happy about that. Um, <laughs> no problem at all. So Margaret, how do you want to proceed on website then since Caroline is still not here, I think? She's not and I'm I'm actually texting her, trying to reach her through Teams. I mean, I don't think there was any misunderstanding about the time of the meeting. She does live in Denver, so it's very early for her. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, let, let's do this. Um, let me tell you a little bit about, we've had a, a couple of precursor conversations about this, and I can summarize where that is in the hopes that Caroline is joining us momentarily. Um, uh, so the, as I think everybody knows, part of our role as the OPM, we were specifically asked to provide um, a web page for the project. And so in getting that started, um, we looked, uh, Caroline uh, and I looked at the, the town's website, as well as the, um, uh, the district's website, uh, because it seems as though it would be good to, for them, to, for it not to look like a totally other thing. And we have come down on the side of 
using the kind of branding approach that's on the um, district's website uh, so that it will look, it won't look exactly like a district web page, but it will look similar to a district web page, which seems appropriate because it's a school. Um, the, we had a call um, on Tuesday this week with Debbie um, and uh, with uh, Sasha, and we learned <laughs> that the district is actually about to update its website, uh, its web design. So that was good. So Caroline took the, um, the updated web design and has sort of folded it in with, to what we wanted to show you this morning. Um, the other thing that we taught, we've had a conversation with Brianna from the town who's on the call this morning, um, just talking about how we might link and you know prominently feature the connection to our web page, which is going to be, you know, it's a freestanding um, URL that is not, that is, you know, neither the towns nor the districts. Um, and I think, Brianna, am I right in that we ended up with um, Amherst Building Project was the URL that we um, we talked about using? That's correct. Yeah. Well, I so I know you had thrown out a couple. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Go ahead, Brianna. You have to forgive me. I'm in my car at a public engagement event down in South Amherst, so my connection's not the best. Um, <laughs> I know that you had thrown out a couple different URLs, and I, on our conversation, I'm not sure which one uh, was landed on. Yeah, I think we had a, a later conversation with Debbie um, and Sasha, and it seemed like Amherst Elementary School, you know, so this would mean that for the, everybody else on the call, if, if you Googled Amherst Elementary School, you would pretty quickly get to this project page. And then separately on the district website and on the town website, there would be prominent links to this page. Yeah, so this is Paul. So just to make sure that um, there's no, we will have multiple building projects going on simultaneously. So mm -hmm. as long as it's got the word elementary school in there or school in there, um, so okay. it's not confused with our other building projects. Okay. That sounds good. So unfortunately, I'm not getting hold of Caroline. So I, I'm going to suggest if Caroline doesn't join us, we we have scheduled um, an October 21st meeting two, two weeks from now. So I think seeing some visuals would be good just for people to have a reaction to, Margaret. Um, yes, absolutely. And, and one of the things we discussed, um, it actually came up when we were choosing OPMs, one of the uh, interviews I did of another town raved about what a wonderful website they had. So I went and looked at it. And one of the things that was nice about it is you could find everything. Um, you could find any presentation, any background materials, but it was also set up when we started to work with, the, when we would start to work with the community, they were doing, you know, community presentations and feedback and quotes from people. So it was set up to really be able to dive down to a lot of detail or stay at where are we right now um, on the project. So I think that will be its attempt. It will also be our archives. So any of us who want to go back and find the proposals or to find you know, what we agreed on will be there. So it will be a combination of inviting people in um, and, and communicating. That's the goal anyway. Um, exactly. So any comments on it? I know it's hard to comment on something um, you haven't seen yet. Um, you can raise hands either on the raise hand mode or just like this. Jonathan. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just see if I can uh, find the link that she had shared with it and maybe I can pull it up. So keep, keep going with what you're doing. Okay. And so Jonathan. I guess I would just really I would tend to reiterate what, what you just spoken about. The, the it, it needs to be clear and and I think it needs to be comprehensive. 
um, so that folks can, you know, uh, we might be six months into something, but if someone in the public says, well, I remember listening into a, a listening session back in February, can, can I find that information that, that, that it, you're able to get back to that past information with relative ease, I think is important. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, the town is now putting up the videos, the recordings of our meetings. They're not always easy to find, but I saw yesterday they're in a in a cluster, you know, so you would also be able to, I'm hoping, Jonathan, to be able to click and say, I want to see that meeting or see that present. So both the physical, if there was a PowerPoint or some kind of chart, you could find it, but you could hear also see the interaction. So at least have links, you know, make it one portal and then we could find things easily. So, so Margaret is looking at her screen, seeing if she can find this. Yeah, it, it looks like my link to comment on what she'd sent has expired. Okay. So I can't, I'm, I apologize everybody, I'm stuck because I don't okay, have an updated link. So both I'm going Debbie, to keep trying to reach her, but why don't we toggle to okay, the both other Debbie, topics? And then both Debbie and Brianna have their hands up. So let's, um, I don't know who, I'll do Debbie first, then Brianna. I was just going to let you know that when we met, when Sasha and I met with Margaret the other day, we talked also about other social media and we decided that for Facebook, it made the most sense to create a separate page for the building project because um, we don't want other school related items on Facebook to get lost in comments and, and questions about the building project. Plus we want to be able to feature it prominently the way it deserves. So we will be planning to do a separate Facebook page that will have the same name as the website. Great. Brianna? Thank you, Counselor. I would just wanted to make the point, even if, if we're not going to look at the web product today, that um, our point of discussion from the town side is that we can integrate it easily in a number of ways from our website so that if people happen to the main town site, that they'll have easy access to find the, the school um, building project page, even though it's a, a separate site, we'll integrate it in a number of ways. So. Um, if this discussion continues until um, another week, I'm happy to come back and talk about those or show those um, alongside the actual project website. That's great. And if uh, one thing what we might do is if there is a link that we could share before the meeting, Margaret, then there could oh, be, yeah. question, you know, yeah. so that so we'll commit to doing that um, and mm -hmm. then try to schedule it in a way that people can come back. Okay, so Actually, thank you. Um, well, you know, one thing that might help because, you know, we've actually seen, but maybe some of you have not seen. Debbie, are you able to share um, what the new, the district's new website looks like, what, what Sasha shared with us the other day? I don't think I have that link. Sasha had the link, but let me look. I'm sorry, I, I'll have to. No, no, it's, out, it, let me it shouldn't. What I have. Yeah, uh, you know, just to sort of let people know, um, and I think you're rolling that out in October, right? The new web design. Do you have a date that it's going to get rolled yes. out? The rollout is it will. We will stop putting new content on by October 18th, so that it can go live on October 22nd. Okay, so um, Kathy, I haven't had a chance to ask you this, but you know, I think what our goal would be. To, to not to roll out the Wix page before the 18th, but we could. Um, I, just a, a question for you all to think about. I, well, I think our next meeting at, at, that everyone agreed on is October 21st. So I think it would be good for people to see the prototype before we roll it out. Yes, and I agree. Will, and that will still be before the designer the first round of the designer panel. So, exactly. um, so I think the timing with ARPS, what they're doing seems like it should be after that meeting. Um, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, so everyone can just stay tuned and we will hopefully send some links. So I think 
we can just thank Brianna and Debbie for joining us and you can go on to the rest of your day and yes. we'll, we'll switch gears and go to the designer um, proposals or applications, submissions that we received. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. So as, as I hope everyone saw, um, I sent minutes that Margaret had done yesterday and I sent the grid that she had originally given to us with some fill in, um, some additional comments, but the continuation of that discussion, I think people should be feel free to zero in in any way they want. Um, our goal is to collect um, positive comments, uh, comments that of there was a gap in the proposal or we're wishing her, her more or potentially negatives, but also to start saying what kind of interview questions do, do three or four of these um, in your mind, individual minds emerge as if, if we could have short lists, you'd hope they would be on. Um, I know Steve last time was volunteering that as we went along, which was very, I took notes on it. Um, but I, this will, all of this information will provide guidance and uh, more detailed comments to both Mike, Ben and I when we're on the MSBA panel. So we're not ranking again, we're just getting as much of a sense of the committee as possible. So I'm gonna just open it up for um, people clicking the raise hand button um, to embellish on what they said last time or offer new thoughts if you've gone back and looked at either the minutes or looked at the, the submissions. Um, Margaret, I see Margaret's hand is up. So I wanna just remind everybody that we really cut short the review of the Tarowski 2 application last time. We just spent a couple minutes on it. So as part of this conversation today, I would like to look back at that one and make sure that the comments that I have are inclusive. We don't need to do that first. We can start with whatever you'd like, Kathy, but I think we should, we should spend a few minutes on that, a, a sort of equivalent amount of time on that application. Okay, so then I invite comments. Um, I think that's a good point. I invite comments on that. I'll on Tarowski too. Steve. I wasn't gonna comment on Tarowski too. I was gonna just make a holistic okay. comment, but is it Would fair game or not, not fair game? I think that's fair game. And, um, and, and just the other uh, thing I would say is if, if anyone has either written or other comments, they can send them to me, you know, without sharing them with everyone and I will compile them as well. But Steve, Go ahead. Yeah, so I, and I thought the conversation was, you know, incredibly useful. I mean, we, we have a committee with such diverse backgrounds on purpose, right? So we have a couple of architects, but when we have people that are, you, you know, have not dealt with architects, um, come from all parts of the community. So I always find these kinds of committees to be really eye-opening, but I, I think, um, so speaking as a perspective as someone who is an architect, for me, the proof of the pudding is what was built, you, you know, what have you done with all of the information and all of the engagement that you've done? So the proof of the pudding is the building itself. And are you capable of doing beautiful, workable, sensible buildings on time, on budget that, um, a community will be proud of. So all of the process before that is really important. End of the day though, we're hiring somebody who's going to design us a significant building for Amherst that will last for, we hope, 100 years, right? So um, that's, I look first at the, that's where I go first, is I look at what have you done for us? <laughs> what have you done? You know, in other words, I don't, without even knowing how you got there. I wanna know what you've done. Something that's actually also important and I don't see much information about this are post-occupancy. Like, so there you have, you've done a beautiful school somewhere. 
the post-occupancy evaluation of said school, did it actually achieve what you said it was going to achieve, you know, other than anecdotes? You know, there's a whole body of knowledge about that, but I don't know how we get more of that information, but uh, basically a third party post-occupancy evaluation of at least a sampling of, you know, of schools, if there are schools. And I, I think Margaret's gonna respond to that. Well, Steve, it's a great question. And actually the MSBA about, I wanna say about a year and a half, hired a consultant to devise an entire post-occupancy evaluation program for them. And I haven't heard anything about it, but I, I totally agree with your point. And I will reach out to the MSBA today and find out. Um, they hired Perkins and Will to create the post-occupancy evaluation. And I think their plan was to then use it as the basis of evaluating a certain number of schools. So let me, let me find out where that stands. But you know, I do think um, that is also a question that could be framed for the interviews. For instance, you could ask a question like, can you um, reflect on your completed projects and what was successful and what could have been better and you know what you learned from that? Uh, my, I see Mike's hand is up as well. Sorry about that. Um, you know, for Margaret, where we uh, end up, I know having gone through the process before talking to references and folks, because we have this completed project list for every firm, um, I, where that plays in, because I know I, I remember those calls being incredibly helpful um, in understanding exactly, I think Steve's exactly right, right? Everything will look great. And then people are in the building, like, you know, and I don't want to pick on one, but we have a building in our school district that you know, I happened to work out five or six years after completion and had all sorts of problems that shouldn't have existed, right? Um, not aesthetic problems, but practical operational problems. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I do think that's really important. And, and I just wonder if Margaret, you could let us know where in the process might we be able to gather references from, you know, places where folks have worked. So that's a great question, Mike. Um... So we have a, some reference checking that we are required to do by the MSBA and my office is in the process of wrapping that up. But it's pretty, I would say it's pretty banal. I, I mean, I would call it checking a box for the MSBA process. We have to ask them five questions, none of which are about post-occupancy. Um, you know, they have to do with, you know, on time, on budget, good documents, communication. Um, and then people are allowed to make additional comments. Um, so I don't think that's gonna be a good source for this particular issue. What I do think is, can be very useful is once we have a kind of short list, so this is November 2nd, right? Um, when we have a short list of those who will be interviewed, um, I can you know, quickly give you a list of, um, projects and references, and we can think about whether some of the folks on the committee might actually want to have some of those conversations with people in more detail and bring that, those calls back to this group in preparation for the, um, the interview process. Or, or, we can, or we can do it sooner. I mean, we don't have to wait for that, but what becomes a little bit hard here is to know whether you should be calling all eight of these firms or calling some subset of them. So Rupert, then Jonathan. Uh, uh, just a question. I'm wondering if in uh, any building projects that were uh, LEED certified at a certain level, do they have to do uh, post-occupancy MNVs and, and is that valuable information that we could get? So I not they're not required now by the MSBA to do that, but I think that's where they're headed with this consulting work that Perkins and Will is doing, that they're going to put in place a formal process. So what I'm curious is, you know, how far they've gotten on that with the pilot. It's possible that some of the schools by some of these designers have been through that. I just don't know. Jonathan? 
So I, I, I think doing those, you know, kind of follow up questions to, you know, kind of the reference questions are very important. I think I would probably wait for until we can narrow it down to a, the interview list. Um, and I was just hoping Margaret, you'd also just refresh us on the process once we get past the current stage to the finalists um, yeah. and, you know, the interview and, and just for our own benefit, but also for the public that might be listening, a yeah. little refresher on the, the process. Okay, so I'll, I'll try and just do a brief recap. So um, the the date they were headed for heading for right now is November 2nd. So on that date, there is a, a public Zoom meeting um, that the, your three, the three folks that Kathy mentioned, so it's Kathy, Ben, and Paul will be Mike. attending. Mike. Mike. Kathy, Kathy, Ben, and Mike. So the, each community is allowed to have three representatives at this meeting, and they meet with what's called the designer selection panel. Um, the, the state for other projects has a designer selection board. It's modeled on that. So, you know, you think of it as a big group of people sitting around a conference table, which is what it used to be, but you don't have to drive to Boston anymore. Um, I can't remember who the chair is right now, but, you know, basically the, the chair will do at that November 2nd meeting what we have done here, which is what Kathy, I think, has done in sort of in leading this conversation. They'll pick up each proposal. They'll ask for comments kind of go around the table, so to speak, and ask for comments. And then um, at the end of it, um, after they've everybody's commented, they'll ask for, you know, discussion. And then they'll, you know, give everybody a virtual piece of paper and ask them to rank their first, second, and third. Then they add up all the numbers and whoever gets the most points, I, I, they do it in this kind of weird way, which is I think numbers uh, three, a score of three is the best two and one. So then whoever's got the most number of points globally of the whole, everybody who's participating is about 12 people in total. Um, they become the one, two and three. Sometimes if the vote is really close, they'll do a fourth. So that's on the second. And then two weeks later, which is the 17th, um, the interviews will occur. They're a little bit less than an hour each. Again, they're public, same group of people around the virtual conference table, same voting. So they do the interviews, they have a discussion, everybody votes. And then we will basically be given top ranked one, two, three, and are able to negotiate with are directed to negotiate with number one. So Margaret, between the second and then the interviews is when we would do background, we'd be individually calling. Yes, um, we could make additional calls, yeah. And if we had, um, you know, R Rupert's uh, point, if we had both, how's the school been working for, you know, from the perspective of teachers and staff, but also do you have, if we're calling a school that says it was net zero, has it met those goals? Uh, yeah. you know, and the maintenance staff, how's it working in terms of the operating systems? Are they complicated? Was it were they taught how to run the new systems? You know, we can have that set of questions. Would just Amherst, would just our committee be doing those phone calls? Yes. Okay. It's the community's responsibility to do what, you know, or the, or in some cases delegated to the OPM to do the reference checks. The MSBA does not do that. But you can say in the conversation, um, you know, as, as you're sort of doing the interviews, you can say, well, we called so-and-so and they said this was fabulous or not so fabulous. Um, and it can, you know, most of the focus of the final selection is the, um, you know, the interview presentation. But I think this reference piece can be important if people have time to do that. It's time consuming, obviously, so, um, but definitely valuable. And honestly, I think given that the MSBA's current emphasis on post-occupancy evaluation, I think they would be very interested in hearing those things. Any other 
comments on this? You know, I had also wondered, I just don't know what my time constraints are. I, for if we get to the point we're saying our top three or four as a group, um, I was thinking that I would drive to a few of the schools that caught my eye examples where they were completed schools to just literally not see them just as a picture on the screen. And um, I just have to figure out whether that's physically possible because I, I don't think I can get inside them anymore. I know Amherst is not letting people in. So it would be more, you know, a sense of the space. Um, mm -hmm. So any other comments on this um, topic? Steve, that was a great question topic and also a good interview question, but a very good background reference check question. So Tarowski, can we, do we want to start with Tarowski too, if people have their notes on that to just complete our grid on them? Or would anyone like to start in another place? I'm looking for a group. I have my Tarowski two notes. Um, Kathy, I'm just going to pull up the little summary sheet um, here so everybody can hopefully see it. Can you all see this? You know, yes. Just to remind us where we were. So um, I folded up all the other columns here, but you know, just to recap, um, since it's been a while. So this is a, you know, a mid-sized firm. They have actually most of the folks, one thing that's distinctive about them is most of the people in their office are licensed architects. So you can see they only have one staff person who's not. They've been in business 14 years. Although um, Peter Tarowski, who's the principal, was in partnership um, in the Pioneer Valley with another firm for many years doing public schools before that. Um, they, whoops, they're currently located in Marion, Massachusetts. Um, so Robert, what, what I'm sorry, Mario. What firm was were they involved with? They were with uh, Peter was with Jones Whitsett. Uh, with well, it wasn't Jones Whitsett. So he was in partnership was with Mark Jones. Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my my recollection, I, I did ask Peter this a number of years ago, but um, there was uh, when the the for those for those of you who've been around long enough. So the, the MSBA had a predecessor organization, which was the SBA, the School Building Authority. And at some point, and I'm gonna say now, it was probably about 15 years ago, um, it was not a very well-run, fiscally well-run, <laughs> Paul, Paul is agreeing with me, not a very fiscally well-run organization. There were a lot of issues, including probably most prominently for districts not getting reimbursed in a timely fashion, and it didn't have a dedicated um, flow of, of funds. Um, so about, and again, I think this is correct, about 15 years ago, they shut the SBA down and they created the MSBA and they created the dedicated flow of funds, which I think you might remember, I think I mentioned it's a, basically a penny of our sales tax in the communities where it's spent goes into this pot, right? But then it's a global pot. Then districts are applying competitively, which is the process you've been through to get into the process. So there was a couple of years when there was no school construction in Massachusetts at all, because they were going through this process of rebooting. And it was at that time that I believe um, Peter um, moved to Marion and created and started this new business. And he's done quite a bit of public work and some schools, but again, he, he worked on other school projects before he moved to Marion. So, although, yeah, and so I do have the right, you know, 14 years ago. So that would have been at the time that there was a so-called moratorium on school building construction. So, you know, again, just going down the list, um, Peter is the, the principal, he has a lot of experience. The person he is proposing to lead the project has been with him a number of years. Um, he, this team also has New Vista, David Stephen, who is on most of these proposals, but not all. Um, I looked, I don't know if you all saw on the second page of this document, I looked at um, sort of average project cost for the five projects they presented. So his was around $39 million. Um, 
they have one completed MSBA project, a couple of others that are in the works. Um, and, uh, you know, I think actually it's, this one is the one that's done this Hannigan School, well, also known as the Irwin Jacobs Elementary School in New Bedford. Um, and then they have the Raymond Shaw Elementary School in Millbury is in construction. And I think pretty close to being complete. Um, they have um, no experience that was noted with um, building net zero. The mechanical engineering firm they're using is GGD, who have done lots and lots of schools, although they haven't done a ton of net zero. They're working on the Driscoll School in Brookline with Jonathan Le Levy. And they also brought to the team uh, Thornton Tomasetti, who has quite a bit of experience in high performing schools. Um, I will, there's some notes down below four from last week, but you know, they touched on most of the items. They talked about ed programming, community art and access, safe and cost effective building operations, cost control, community engagement. They touched on all of those in their thing. They did provide, a, I think, I don't remember what exactly what it was, a daylighting example. Um, there were some good notes about achieving um, program objectives. They did touch on Fort River and Wildwood. They have done CM at risk projects. Um, and I, I think this is actually important to note. They did, um, their Irwin, the school in New Bedford did receive a caudal cit citation, which is a, is a particular, it's actually particularly for schools mostly elementary schools and, it, and they were the only one of the firms. Um, and you can look up the citation program if you're interested. They're the only one of the firms that applied that had re actually received a design award um, for this, from this educational program. So last week, um, we really just touched on this, but someone, a couple of people made the comment, Kathy, this might've been you that, um, the, it felt like to you that the uh, priority, the priorities were, it didn't, it, did, it felt to a couple of people, I think like a bit of a stock response. So that was where we had left it last week. Um, if anybody has any other comments about the application, I would e add them in here just to complete the matrix. I'm looking around the screen for any other comments. Mike, you have to unmute. All right, I thought I did. Um, my apologies. I thought they did a fair amount of analysis on the site work, um, the two different sites, and I thought that was notable. Um, you know, I have my own thoughts on site stuff and agree with most of it, but I, I appreciate that they really did look, and it's not a fait accompli, it needs to be one side or the other, and, and I like sort of the clear way of opportunities and challenges they presented it. Um, I think from Sean's perspective, they did, you know, a bit on cost control uh, as a prominent feature. So I thought that was uh, a positive use. And, and I also liked that they did the uh, community use and access um, that they, um, that's something that I know we've talked a lot about and, and I thought it was there. Um, I, I agree with the, in terms of negatives, um, I agree with what's already on the chart. So I won't repeat what Margaret already has written. Um, just wanted to plus one what Margaret has for negatives. Steve? Thank you for bringing us back to this one. And I actually do think that their diagrams of the, in the back were among the best of the proposals uh -huh. that were submitted because it sort of gave enough information that they had been thinking about it, but not too much that we actually saw a building there. So I appreciate the you know, looking at those diagrams and looking at their notes regarding the diagrams, it you know certainly got me thinking about the pluses and minuses of both sites, but then also where a building could go on on either site. Um, you know, I had forgotten that Peter had worked with Margo, and he, specifically he had worked as I believe project manager on the on the Crocker Farms School. So I, I only mentioned that 
and that was a, a long time ago, but I only mentioned that because we have noted for two other firms that they've had involvement with Amherst schools. So we noted that JCJ had involvement with uh -huh. uh, um, Wildwood and that uh, uh, TSKP had involvement with Fort River, then also the Crocker Farm sort of restudy. So we, we should just note that there is prior involvement for better or worse with the Amherst schools. Um, I'm looking to see, I, you know, I, I have some additional comments on it. Um, Mike mentioned uh, the community use, but they give us, they gave nice examples, both of the Shaw School and the Mil Milbury School and the Jacobs School of different ways that the community, that they structured the school in a way that the community could use them, but also that they could do multiple uses within the school that it could be a cafeteria, but also a music room, um, giving it an extra place. And they did in, I think it was the earlier life. So that's where um, I think they, yes, they w worked on the Williamstown school as well. So out in our region that they, they've focused on some. And Tisbury, I know has been a tough project for them because it was a t town meeting it didn't get all the way through, they're back to design. So they're in one that they've come back again. Um, so it's an experience that um, I would think they probably have something they could talk about learning from. Um, so that that was it. Uh, you know, and a few others, I Margaret, when you said you thought I said thin, it was they did do the diagrams of the two schools and land, but they didn't talk a lot about, um, you know, topography, water level issues, slope, where a few of the others, this is more in what reading one compared to others. Um, yeah. So they didn't do that. And they didn't talk, they did talk about daylighting as a word. But what they said is, we always do daylighting. We do it from all. We do it for all projects. So I was looking for an example. You know, take a look at this school or that school. So I actually have a fair amount of notes on this one, which means I found it interesting because some of the others I went through more quickly. You know, I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. So I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah. So do people want to go back? Then we have. Eight, eight submissions. Um, you know, if Margaret's got her grid, if you look at the grid on some of them, we said more and more of what we said was positive. Um, do we, do we, I'm, I'm comfortable doing any way people might want going around the group on if you were to pick, and I'm gonna say pick four, so we could potentially have four, but if you pick four, or three um, that you would hope would be shortlisted. Um, talk about the reasons why, um, if anyone is willing to jump in that way, um, or what, whatever, to come back to put more information in this grid or to put more qualitative and sort of a sense of the, the team, a sense of the proposal, Steve's emphasis on you know, the design team who we're getting as architects. I will just start with that. Any, anyone can raise their hand. Okay. You, you, know, you can also do this by process of elimination, if that makes it yeah, easier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we, could do, we, we could do it the other way. The, the firms that were on the weaker end, that um, ab yeah. absolutely, Margaret, you know, we can do one by one weaker end um, and would hope, would not want them to be shortlisted. Steve. Yeah, so I, you know, these processes are always very interesting because I think there's eight very capable firms and any one of these firms can do it. So it's not even a matter of what's the weaker one. <laughs> I guess it is a matter of what's the weaker one and what's the stronger one. But as we like to say, when we do searches, we didn't select this person, not because they weren't completely capable, but that there are other better candidates. So 
I'll, I'll just flat out start then. So if I were to choose four, I would choose uh, JCJ with Moody Nolan. I would choose L, L, I'm sorry, I don't know, the firm from Worcester, LP. LPAA. You know, I, uh, I'm sorry, could someone share the screen again? Because I was actually basing it on that. Uh, I would choose that firm. I would choose TSKP and, and actually those would probably be the three that I would choose. But if I had to choose a fourth, I would put Jonathan Levy in the mix. Do you want me to explain why? Yeah, or, that would be great. Yeah, so um, I think that JCJ Moody Nolan is such an interesting possibility of, you know, sort of engaging a new a, a firm that's basically new to our area and but just brings a sort of remarkable, I'm talking about Moody Nolan, that sort of brings a remarkable history together with JCJ, which is a, you know, very venerable New England firm. I think that that partnership is really has a possibility of being exciting. Um, uh -huh. The LP, I'm sorry, LPA, LPA firm from Worcester. I think that their work is very competent. I like the fact that they're the really the firm that's the closest to Amherst, even though that's not a criterion. And I like the fact that the team is led by a woman architect. Um, TSKP, I like, I think that of the firms that I'm mentioning, I think that their design work is most consistently the highest at the highest level, you know, sort of balancing all the complex inputs. I actually like the diversity. So one of the things that I looked at well, after the last time we met is the very top of the org chart, the top of the organization chart. So we have these big complicated organization charts. For me, the most important box is the one at the top. That's basically the architect. And I look at who, who is from, um, who actually, those are the people that you're actually gonna see. So those are the people that will meet with the community. Everybody else are ancillary. So they'll be supporting the architects, but they're not the ones that engage with the community. Uh, TSKP actually has one of the very few um, Latina, members of its team. So I think that I, I think that further, you know, there are very few BIPOC people working for the architect, you know, on the architects on that top box. TSKP is one of the firms that has that. They do very good design work. And then I'm sorry, I lost somebody just walked into my house and is asking a question. We, we and I've lost track of did, what was the firm that I Oh, Jonathan Levy. So Jonathan Levy should be in the mix because they're a high design firm. They have a really good track record of, you know, excellent design. I think that there are probably other issues on the way they get to that design, but I just want to put them in there for discussion. That's it. Others um, willing to be brave the way Steve was. But Sean. So I agree with um, Steve on JCJ and um, I think it was LPA or whatever that yeah. name is. Um, Jonathan Levi wasn't as thrilled about based on the proposal just because it didn't seem like they had a lot of elementary school experience and the um, and the drawings, I think we talked about some issues with the drawings that they put in. And then the one firm I might add in would be Danisco. I think I, I like their I like their proposal. I think that they're led by an educational programmer and I thought they put a lot of AMR specific information in there. And I like their, their drawings at the end and how, how they thought about um, the challenges at Fort River. Since we have experience with um, two of the firms, are there people who've had experience with them who want to weigh in on whether they should be in, in the mix or not? So you're talking about um, JCJ and TSKP? Correct. Oh. And we should probably throw in uh, Turkhouse, the firm we just talked about. So really three firms. Yeah. yeah. 
I can say for JCJ that they were, I thought they did a really good job with the public engagement piece when they did the Wildwood project. And they were just in the, the meetings that we had, the, we had many school building committee meetings, they were very responsive to input and then tweaking their designs based on input that they received from different people. So I thought that was a, one of the major pluses for them. Jonathan. Uh, I will comment on, on uh, Paul's comment and then I'll, I'll give you my three, uh, although a lot of the comments kind of repeated themselves after a certain point. Um, I know JCJ from kind of an experience as a parent during the first time around, I, I thought they ran the, the, um, the public engagement things from parents' perspective well. Um, and uh, obviously I know uh, TSKP uh, through the Fort River Committee, um, I found them responsive. Uh, I, I liked their design creativity. Um, I, you know, they, they dealt with well with, you know, kind of the public interaction in, during that experience. Um, and, you know, having known the Kurowskis, uh as, uh, you know, as an architect here in the Valley, um, I, I think their work tends to be very, uh, the elementary work tends to be very kind of kid focused to me, which I've always found rather positive. Um, they, you know, they may not be the high design of, of some of the other firms, but um, I, you know, for elementary schools, I like the kid focus portion of it. And then if you'll bear with me, since I'm, I was looking at a different chart for my top three, um, I would choose JCJ, uh, Moody Nolan, uh, where did they go? LPA or um, my, my French is horrible, Limo Pagano. <laughs> Um, and, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Rent in Italian. Italian I can do, but, um, and TSKP, those would be my top three. Margaret, is, are you able to share the entire spreadsheet that shows all the firms? I can, it will be, get kind of tiny. You know, Margaret, maybe if you pull up the one that you did for MSBA that shows the consultants, because the columns are less wide. Sure. Me I mean, I, I think you can see all eight more easily there, but I'm, I, I might be wrong. Yeah, and I apologize because I've only got my one little screen. By the way, I'm in England. <laughs> <laughs> it's also foggy here. <laughs> but it's two so, o'clock there or something. No, no, it's, uh, it's one o'clock. Pretty one. close. It's pub time. <laughs> Does anyone know? else want to jump in um, in terms of thoughts? Phoebe, Rupert, Ben? Okay, I, I will. Um, I, in terms of uh, how the firms that have been here have worked with the communities, I did not uh, participate in the JCJ public sessions, but the TSKP, I went to both several of the committee meetings and then the presentations they did in the middle school. And I thought they both, um, they did very clear presentations and I liked the way they interacted with quite pointed questions that came from the audience. Um, they, they went back and forth and they Reference some of um, the different studies. So people might have had different, but they, they, and they were very clear. So a couple architects that were in the audience uh, who know net zero, who have been sponsors of the net zero thing, came away commenting on a, that they thought the team knew what they were talking about, which was uh, for me as the lay person was good. My top three would have LPA right at the top, um, partly because of the clarity of the way they wrote um, and the way they organized it. I felt that that would be a clarity in the way they would present to the community. And it was one I wanted to, really wanted to see the schools they had built. Um, so to, to get a sense of them because they did a nice job of picking out some schools as um, as examples that, and they tied them into things we were looking for. So I also would put TSKP and JCJ on my list of three. And JCJ, for all the reasons Steve said, um, the, them bringing in Moody, Moody Nolan, my big question on that team, and it's something 
that was captured, I'm worried there are too many people on the team. And sometimes that the bringing in of Moody Nolan in partnership meant that they are partnering out the education role and a couple other roles. Um, and the one person they dedicated to the team on education wasn't um, wasn't minority, you know, so that the, the team clearly is minority led. So the Moody Nolan school examples were very interesting, some of them. So I, I just wanted to know about more about, you know, what 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 team we would be getting for which things. Although they laid that out, um, it wasn't clear to me that we didn't have duplication. Mike. Yeah, so um, I think just one that's not getting talked about that that I'd like to put in the mix is Danisco. Um, you know, they've got incredible amounts of MSBA experience, which I value. They've got uh, in Western Mass, looking at school consolidations, which sort of all signs indicate that they've got experience with a carbon neutral, um, you know, I think, you know, design lead is, is you know, uh, in terms of diversity. Um, and, and just, you know, I, I'll say that, you know, this is why we have a diverse team. So I know that some folks really value high levels of design um, and some of the aesthetic aspects, and I'm not here to disagree with that. I would say that's lower on the list of my priorities, and, and, and I'm really going to be careful with my comments here, but having been principal at Crocker Farm and coming to that school a couple of years after the renovation was done and seeing the beauty of the school and the functional issues that it had, um, I'm less swayed. I'm not saying I'm right. I just want to be explicit in my biases. I'm less swayed by, by quote unquote high design than I am about kind of cost control, green school, functional pieces, having daylighting, all those pieces. Um, I value at a probably bizarrely higher level than, than other people on this team. So, so I know there was some kind of critiques of Danisco and some of the other ones, uh, other firms. Jonathan Levy, like I said the last time, like I liked it, it looked neat. It, it really makes me anxious looking at those designs and the drawings and looking at some of the costs of their prior projects. Um, and again, I wanna be like, I'm just being broken record. I'm not right, this is just my perspective. And having gone into Crocker Farm and seeing leaking skylights or daylights, whatever, from the from the ceiling five years after they were done, um, you know, great to have them. Great to have the natural light on a practical operational level. They're just problematic, right? And I'm not against skylights. I'm not, I'm not making that broad statement, but uh, I think living the experience I've lived as a principal and, and in this current role, uh, you know, if I, I I could easily live with a you know, slightly less expensive, incredibly functional, wonderful green school uh, over spending more funds on high levels of design, um, you know, and again, this is one person on the committee. And so I thought Danisco checked all the boxes that way for me. And, you know, for me, you know, I'd advocate at least for them to be considered in the mix. Steve, Jonathan, no offense, hopefully no offense to our architects and the team because they bring a lot of value. <laughs> you know, Mike, I, you know, the disco was up there if I had done four for me, I, I liked it. And the, the one, the one uh, gap is they talked quite a bit about Fort River, but they didn't talk about Wildwood. So, you know, I think they're aware that we have a choice of where we're doing and the challenges they did such a nice job on Fort River on challenges that I assumed that they would would have done a good job on the other, and it was a space issue. Um, other comments, it, it you know we've um, or thoughts on top three, top four. We Tecton has not come out. Neither has D. DRA Chorowski too got some positive comments. So I'm just, I'm taking lots of notes. Um, I don't see any. Um, Steve. Yeah, so, um, you know, thank you. Thank you, Mike, for those comments, which I think are incredibly important. Um, and I, Jonathan, I wanna weigh in here also. High design does not mean more expensive. In fact, sometimes high design means less expensive. So high design means making the most with the resources that you have and being able to balance 
multiple kinds of challenges, including cost, community input, you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So there, there absolutely there's some high design that is more expensive and there's some low design that's more expensive also. So for the, the issue I, and you know, a lot of people are talking about Danisco. So I will also, they're not on my list because in some ways I see, um, you know, the work to me is, uh, seems like a camel almost, like maybe they're trying to be, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And so I didn't see sort of a rigor in the design. But the other conceptual problem I have is that we're hiring an architecture firm, right? So, you know, basically the, this is what we're doing is we're hiring an architecture firm with a bunch of consultants. The principal of this particular firm who has the name Danisco, but I'm not sure that that's the Danisco whom the firm is named after. I, I, I think it's a second generation firm. Yeah, and so Ken, Ken Danisco is the original founder. Ken Danisco is a founder in, in the 1970s. Yeah. yeah, this is his daughter who is now the daughter, okay. leader of the firm. But, but um, she's not an architect. So she's the president of the firm, but not an architect. So to me, that is that sends off an alarm. And the reason is like, we wouldn't hire a law firm where the head of the firm is not a lawyer. We just wouldn't do that. And so it's, it's legal to, in Massachusetts, that's legal to have a corporation with the president, you call yourself an architecture firm, the president can be a non-architect as long as I think it's a majority of the partners are or are architects. Yeah. But it's something to pay attention to. So the I think it's the only one of the group in which that has that structure where the president of the firm is not an architect. And so yeah. that, that, and, that sends and off it an is alarm. somewhat unusual. Yeah, that sends off an alarm for me. And particularly when that person's name, even though it's second generation, is the the name of the firm. So Jonathan? Unmute myself. I'll lower my hand too. I, I, I would echo some of what uh, Steve said. I don't, I don't want to get into a debating match and it's not the intent between kind of <laughs> Steve and I and, and Mike, um, but, but good design, excellence in design is not necessarily more expensive and it is a more holistic um, approach. And uh, I, I do, but I do firmly agree uh, with Steve on the topic of, of we're hiring an architect. The architect should be, uh, an architect should be the lead. Um, the architect's role here is, is both one of design, but is also marshalling the, uh, the, the larger group of all the other designers. Um, and that's a, that's a particular skill uh, that's important. Um, and it's, it's a fun, it's, it's one that's often overlooked in discussion of, of you know, how buildings look, uh, but you don't get to that end line with a, with a, a great functional building, a, great, a building that's very economical, unless you've got someone who knows how to marshal um, all those, those separate diverse trades. And I'm not saying they can't do that, but I, I feel uh, more confident when, when there's an architect in, in the lead of that. Um, uh, that said, uh, you know, the reason I didn't have Jonathan Levy in my top three was as much as I'm impressed by their design skills, they didn't, didn't seem, it seemed to lead too much into that as their, as their top thing. and didn't seem very child centered to me. So I was kind of trying to balance uh, my top three. So um, if, if I'm, uh, Sean's hand is up. Okay, I'm looking for hands up. Yeah. Yeah, again, just going back to the comparison between Danisco and Levi um, or Levy. Um, I mean, the, the projects that Levy highlighted, I don't think they highlighted one elementary school. So again, thinking about, you know, the, the lawyer example, we wouldn't hire a, you know, a criminal defense lawyer for some other type of law. So, um, so that was one of my biggest issues is that they know this is an elementary school. We talked about being child-centered and they didn't highlight a single elementary school list unless I missed it. Whereas Danisco, I think all five of their projects that they highlighted were elementary schools and they just have a pretty extensive list of elementary school work. Um, so I think that's what made the difference between those two for me. So Mike's hand is up. And, and so I appreciate uh, Steve and Jonathan's perspective on that. It's no critique of high design. It just, you know, I know the town's finances are limited and, you know, I get anxious when I look at things that um, 
at least from the lay perspective, and I certainly don't have the background to, to make this statement confidently, look like, ooh, that's not good. And I think the data on Jonathan Levy, when I look at prior projects, looks outside perhaps where we're mostly headed. Um, so I, I'm happy to sit down, you know, on uh, Danisco. I just thought, you know, they check a lot of boxes. I do value experience of the conversation we had prior to this one, having multiple projects completed, having multiple you know, consolidation projects completed successfully in our area in Western Massachusetts. That stuff matters to me. I tend to think past performance predicts future performance. So that's, but I, I'm willing to <laughs> let that go. I think the other three that, that I had in my top four were similar to what's been described earlier, you know, LPA, um, JCJ, and TSKP. So, you know, if I'm the only Danisco fan, I'm happy to be the only Danisco fan. And then, uh, but I just, I, I just want to at least enter it into the conversation because I, I do think, again, I, I value people who have had successful MSPA projects that are similar to this one. And I think their track record, you know, they have a long track record. They've got a local recent track record in the city of Springfield, uh, which is out here and multiple consolidation projects that I've heard good things about. So, uh, I'm happy to let it go, but I just wanted to at least explain why I was thinking about it and certainly wasn't a critique to the field of architecture. My apologies if it was perceived that way. So um, a couple things um, just to add to the mix here. So um, Sean, to your comment, the field school, um, the field elementary school by John and Levy's office is an elementary school. Um, I would encourage anybody who sort of, um, you know, wants to kind of look at it. it. It is a sophisticated building relative to the design comments. So it doesn't read and it isn't photographed with, you know, a little kid vibe. Um, but, you know, to some degree, I would say that's marketing. You know, you could send the photographer out with a different set of um, requirements and you might get a different result. Um, the other thing I'll say about Jonathan Levy's firm is um, at least one of their schools and, and arguably two of their schools, I'm thinking in particular of the Dearborn School in Boston, um, which is also in their portfolio, was really designed to be a very kind of, um, uh, what's the right way to put this? It was designed to be a showstopper and it is a showstopper. Um, it's a it's a middle high school, um, and I do agree in general that you know except for the field elementary school in their portfolio, um, they have not done as many elementary schools as as most of the others. Um, the and when you do a showstopper design, it is expensive. Um, the MSBA will share some cost data with this group um, prior to the interviews, and I, you know I think you're going to see some of that reflected in the relative costs um, of projects. Um, and that's also you know, worth taking a look at um, when it comes out there, because there are, there are differences between this group within the, the set of designers. So Carolyn has appeared, <laughs> but she said she did not get the invite. Oh, uh, it went. It went. It went out to the email. Um, sorry, it, Angela did send it out. I saw that she had invited all three, but we. Well, can, I saw. Uh, I saw an email saying she'd sent it. I just didn't see. Yeah, invite. we don't. I, yeah, we don't I, see. I, the individual, so yeah. Yes, yeah. I um, sent her mine this morning. Um, so let me give her a moment. Let's give her a moment just to see if she can join while we wrap up comments on this. So does anybody else want to speak up about um, their thoughts about the, the choices? Um, I, uh, I think my top three were covered. I actually had LPA, JCJ, and then Denisco as well. Um, I did not include what's different uh, for me was I don't know that I would put um, oh geez let me see if I can find it T S K P is that what it is um, yeah at the top I had some real and I and I um, I understand that we have sort of uh, 
in Amherst have firsthand knowledge of them and that people were, uh, sounds like people were pretty impressed. Um, I had some issues with their proposal. Um, and so I, I uh, and I think we talked about it last time. Um, and I talked about it last time. Um, and I think that, um, you know, if they're gonna be uh, in our top three, I think there's some, especially having experience with us previously with Amherst before, I think there's some real questions in there about, um, you know, what we saw in their proposal versus what they saw when they were involved with us before. So I just wanted to put it out there because it sounds like they're, you know, they may be in one of our top few. Um, and I think that that's a, I felt like some of their, some of the things in their proposal kind of missed the mark about who Amherst is. Um, mm -hmm. so I think those are some significant sort of um, questions to kind of figure out with them if they've been here before, if they have experience with, uh, with us, if we've been impressed with what they brought to us before, you know, how do you kind of reconcile that? So that's all, that's all I wanted to say. Ben's hand is up. Hi, Ben. Yeah, just, just to kind of tag on to that, they like, so overall, you know, with, with their familiarity with Amherst and, and, you know, how many times they've interacted with us, I, I think that bumped them down on my list. I, I still had them in the top three, but I had them at number three personally. And it was, it was absolutely because of the, so I, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this from the political standpoint too. We have to sell this project to the, the public. And I think the more you exhibit I don't, I don't want to say a lack of willingness to learn about who we are as a community, but I, I, I think the way they depicted this as like this, you know, bucolic, rural little town, I, I, that, that didn't sit well with me. But the, the ease of, of working with them, I, you know, I, I was moderately impressed by. So not moderately, I was impressed by that. The fact that they were responsive to the, you know, our, our, uh, our input. And, and I give them extra points because they were here for the, the passing of a net zero bylaw. And I, I think they took a great deal of interest in that, but I just think they kind of missed the mark as to who we are kind of. Paul. Yeah, so I just, I, I mean, sort of build on, I found Phoebe's comments really interesting. I think she's accurate on that. Um, I think the things that we should be thinking about are, are there any that we do not want? I mean, what we can, what the value we bring to the MSBA is like, these are the firms we do not want. Like we, these are not acceptable. And if there's a handful of firms that we say we really love, then we would um, bring those, you know, bring those forward. Um, I think, you know, when we talk about our experiences with the firms that have done business with the town before, you know, public outreach and the connection with the public is a, is a key component, but also the work product is really important as well. So I think we want to look at that uh, comprehensively um, in terms of, of how that all worked out. And I wasn't here for most of them, but um, so I think the, the people who work directly with them are the most, would be most advantageous to hear from. Well, I, I'll volunteer that the fir the firms that no one has named are DRA, Tecton, De DRA, and Tecton so far. I mean, we we focus a, a little bit on Tarowski too. So, Mike, Mike's hand is up. So I actually have to run to a meeting, so I'll, I'll say this, and then I have to depart. But you know, for me, I think I said the four. You know, for me, were Danisco, JCJ. Uh, Lamaro Pagano um, and TSKP. Um, I struggle. I appreciate Phoebe's comments. I, I spoke about it last time, so I'm not going to repeat myself. It's a real concern. It's a real concern. It continues to be a concern. It'd be perhaps less of a concern if they hadn't already worked here. Um, I might be more less bothered because I'd say, oh, maybe that because that, that, that is the reputation of Amherst. You go far away, people might believe that. Um, but it's a hard one. So you know, for me, the other four were below the level I'd feel, you know, just for me personally. So DRA, Jonathan Levy, um, Tecton and Taraski too, you know, in terms of kind of the rule outs for me, again, just as one individual. And again, I struggle in the same way Phoebe and Ben talked about it. Um, and, and I do have concerns that they've, you know, MSB experience is more limited with TKSB as well. And, you know, I know I'm, 
I, I'm very aware of, I try to be aware of my biases anyways. And I, I do have a bias towards people who have done this before with, you know, the MSBA and, and, you know, and I like the people, right? So like I've met them, I worked with them. I agree with everyone, you know, Jonathan, what Kathy said. And, you know, I, I am struggling how much to weigh that for both the firms we know versus the, the documents we have. And, and so I'm trying to be, the way I'm trying to think about it is I'm not including my past experience with those firms. I'm trying to look at their proposals because in some ways it may not be, it's useful information. It's also perhaps not fair for me because I was, I was heavily involved with one and pretty involved with another. Um, and, and that's, you know, I might think that about the other firms, but I don't have that experience. So I'm trying to weigh it just on the proposal, not necessarily on past experience. So, you know, I've got four that for me, you know, are in that mix and then four that are not in that mix. But I just want to appreciate Phoebe for coming back to that point, because I think in this particular community, um, rightfully uh, and thankfully, um, people want to be described accurately. And there's a number of people in our community who don't feel like they're part of the public process. Um, and I think for good reason. And, you know, I think language matters. And if folks would see that as a public document and feel like, well, they're not speaking to my Amherst, you know, the Amherst I work for, the Amherst Elementary Schools is the majority of students identify as kids of color, right? A significant percentage of our students live in um, dense housing. And so, you know, we talked, we don't need to rehash this. I get the other perspective. It's just a, a line, but I feel like when you're describing the potential client or, you know, that you're working with, you know, it's not a line that should be just taken casually. It's, it's really describing who we are as a town. So anyway, those are the four I have. I can probably hang out for can about you, two more can minutes. Can you repeat what the four are? Meeting. Can you report what the, what the four are? What, what were Sorry, reporting? yeah. So Denisco, and I'm just reading on uh, the order that they are on the chart, not in order of um, how I'd, I'd weigh them. Denisco, JCJ with Moon and Nolan, Lamoureux Pagano, and TSKP. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I'll have to leave in two minutes. My apologies. So I see Steve's hand is up. And um, the the other so, thing we were going to just just let me say one thing, because I'll, I'll move it to the next time we meet. Um, some of these things have uh, started to indicate to me types of interview questions we could be asking, um, including about the diversity of our student mix, how does that matter? You know, special needs programs. So think, keep thinking about interview questions as well. Steve? Yeah, so my list is the same as Mike's, except for Danisco. So I, I, I'm gonna take Levy off my list or Levi because I don't think it's a good fit. So I, I'm gonna stick with those three. So, but other than that, I agree with Mike. And I agree with the comments about that single line in the TSKP proposal. Surprisingly, they also had one of the more interesting descriptions of diversity and, you know, so, so and I hope that the marketing person is listening to this because that was insane to leave that line. In, but. So, I, yeah, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I would just, I would agree with what Steve said. And it, it's particularly, it's particularly ironic given that the founder of the firm is non-white, you know, that they're, they're <laughs> in their own history, they, they should have been a bit more sensitive to say the least. Good editor was needed on this one <laughs> with, with, with what are we saying here? Um, so I'm, I'm seeing no other hands up. Um, so I just wanna, uh, before I open it up for public comments and I see there are hands up or there were hands up in public comments, we, we have scheduled a meeting for October 21st, two weeks from today um, and we can focus on interview questions there. We can bring back the discussion of the web. And Margaret had two other items that we were trying to put on the list, the agenda before we get into the world of, we do have a designer. And one was, um, well, we have to talk about the larger schedule, but one was how the MSBA reimburses, so people understand what the reimbursement formula and the other, and this is a bit more long-term, what we can't, the do's and don'ts um, when this goes out to a vote. So what we can do as a committee or what we can't do. So I just wanted, we do have that next meeting scheduled. Um, Margaret, do you have a comment before I open it up for public comments? Caroline has joined, but we may not have time to look at the web page now. So um, I'll leave that up to you, Kathy. 
I, I think it would be better since Mike had to leave and yeah. Allison had to leave. Um, Allison had told us that earlier that she may be short circuited on some of these morning meetings, but if um, maybe check with Carolyn at eight o'clock and I'll make sure she gets, there are two ways in, one is as a member of the public, the, the Zoom link and the other is the individual thing. So I think it would be better. Does everyone agree not to back to web at this point? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I want to open it up to public comments and we have one public and his hand is up. So Paul, I think you're hosting. You will have to do, I can't bring him in. I'm not co-host. Oh, I am. No, I am co-host. I can, I can bring him in. How do, did you pr promote him already? Okay. Bruce, you are, you have joined us. Um, um uh, Bruce Colden, um, I'm listening to all of this. Uh, for what it's worth, my three are the same as Michael's and Steve's and Jonathan's, but uh, uh, that's not what I have to say. Uh, two short things. Firstly, um, my experience with JCJ uh, in their first uh, their Wildwood round was uh, very positive as well as for, as far as their preparedness to engage in public comment, because I was all of the public comment related to daylighting, and I was very aggressive uh, uh, and committed to it, including making you know, daylighting models, uh, offering people uh, views through them, using uh, metrics to measure and so forth. And the design team, uh, and indeed the whole committee in the process was very, um, uh, uh, dignified that effort quite uh, admirably, I thought, given that I arrived somewhat late um, and, and uh, had every indication that they would uh, continue to engage if that project had gone forward. So I was very impressed with that. They, as a design team, were um, quite positively uh, prepared to engage in someone like me who was coming along essentially from uh, the outside. So I, I um, imagine that, the, uh, and, and um, Doug uh, um, Roberts was, uh, Doug Roberts, Douglas Roberts, I think. Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, he is still involved and he was the fellow who I uh, was mostly connected with on that process. So I was, I, I, I uh, endorse uh, a lot of what's been said in that regard. Secondly, um, the TSPK um, process, I was only uh, involved in that in one of the public engagements and Jonathan, you can help me here, but I was particularly impressed with the way into that meeting, they brought in this, um, this kind of volunteer squad of facilitators. Um, it was one of the best and most effectively facilitated public engagements uh, that I've ever been involved in. And I've been involved in a lot of them over the years. So whoever put together or thought of bringing that uh, squad of uh, facilitators, um, they, they seem to be uh, uh, available and, 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 and so forth. I think they're probably Connecticut based, but it was a very, uh, useful um, resource that that firm brought to that process. And I thought it would be worth uh, um, stating that and, and, and no matter who is involved, perhaps uh, uh, recognizing that that resource may exist. And if it was able to be replicated in the way it was at the Fort River engagement, it could be a very valuable um, thing to be uh, using. I think uh, only to say again, I'm so impressed with all of you and and how you're working together. And, uh, and there seems to be no stones unturned um, from the point of view of somebody uh, sitting and watching this from the public. Um, uh, I feel very, very, very reassured. That's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. So I, since we have no other members of the public, there are no other public comments right now. Um, the next meeting is October 21st. If you have any additional thoughts, please send them in. And any initial thoughts, Steve, you actually, I took notes last time. You said that would be a good question to ask them. Um, I, I will go back to my notes on that and the tape is rolling so I can actually hear, hear, hear what you said. Um, but similarly, um, some other issues have come up. Margaret suggested one on daylighting. So if we come up with five or six, I thought we had for the OPM selection process, for those who were on that subcommittee, I thought we had excellent questions that in the responses, we got to see teams thinking 
um, and 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 either addressing it directly or bringing in other examples. So the interview questions I thought helped a lot sift through if you have three or four front runners, which one starts to emerge. So please do, if you think about that. And Phoebe, you bringing in, you know, sensitivity to who we are as Amherst. Do you know who our children are? Do you know what the mix is that will be in the school? Um, it, we can probably phrase that in a way that brings that out as well. So I think I'm seeing no hands up. Any last minute comments? from the committee, I think we can adjourn and we are adjourning at 9.32. So we were extremely efficient. Thank you everyone. And I will see you again at eight in the morning in a couple of weeks. Steve,